Hello guys and welcome. I hope you are all enjoying Kentica Experience con Connection so far. My name is Dmitry Bastron and I'm Solutions Architect at Unrivaled, digital agency in the UK. For the last couple of years, I have also been nominated as Kentica Experience MVP as well. Feel free to drop me a message using any of the communication channels below. Okay, today I'm going to talk about our recent experience implementing e-commerce features on the existing website for one of our clients. But before we start with the technical architecture details, let's take a step back and have a look at a few available e-commerce options for our website. When shortlisting the options to consider, it is important to understand what is already in place, as well as some business-specific information. In our case, the client are fast-growing company operating in multiple countries. They are selling mainly uh, subscription-based applications for industrial businesses. These are sold in multiple countries, obviously, and they are providing business-to-business -business experience. The existing solution includes a quite simple brochure website, which is serving e-commerce content to their visitors. They are offering prices on application and uh, currently orders, all orders are processed manually. And moreover, it's all built on, on the CMS that must not be named. Okay, so during the discovery phase of this project, we have shortlisted a few options to consider. Firstly, uh, CMS that must not be named offers a native e-commerce module, which you can install, or recently they have also started offering headless e-commerce solution as well. Outside of the default CMS options, we have chosen a couple more. One of those is Shopify Advanced and Experience, where both can be integrated with the current solution in a headless manner. We have ruled out the following options though. Uh, e-commerce, basically uh, mainly because of the poor dev experience we had in the past and poor support in general. And full bespoke implementation, which taking into account uh, the estimated cost of build for all the required features for e-commerce solution was significantly higher compared to the license cost of the options listed on the slide. Right. What are the e-commerce requirements, requirement features uh, in particular? The system should allow for uh, easy management of subscription-based electronic products. Then these products, you should be able to bundle them uh, with their different options and provide discounted prices for bundles. Configure and display related products and recommendations, obviously. And since the website is multilingual, the shop should also support translations and operate in multiple currencies. Other must-have options like basket, payment gateway integration, regional taxation, which is really important, and order return should be also supported as well. We have scored the listed options against our requirements to find the potential gaps where additional technical attention may be required. Basically, having worked in the past with uh, CMS must not be named native e-commerce solution, we have remembered there were some difficulties implementing recurrent purchases. Uh, with the recent headless e-commerce solution, the additional customizations may be required for payment gateway integration because it wasn't provided out of the box for the appointed uh, pay payment gateway, as well as uh, for order, order return function. For Shopify Advanced, uh, after research, we found that there are some limitations around bundles and bundle pricing, which wasn't fully available out of the box and can be delivered through some plugin. And Kentica Experience, uh, in comparison, will require extra effort integrating with payment gateway 
and implementing reg regional taxation, which out of the box wasn't flexible enough in our case. But overall, functionality wise, all four options were good for our solution. Implementation effort required across all of them would have been roughly the same. Well, in this instance, the key decisive moment here was the price. For the native and headless options, CMS that must not be named doesn't have an open price book, and therefore they only provide price and application. But having compared the prices with Shopify and experience, those options turned out to be expensive and very expensive, which left us with only two options on our plate. When you check on the pricing for, Shop for Shopify, it appears to be a very cost-effective option at first. However, when calculating the price for Shopify, it is also important to look at the projected amount of transactions on your website, which we have um, calculated based on the previous years uh, for 2021, 2022, and 2023. Um, and as, as uh, Shopify are applying additional transaction fee on, on top of each transaction, but not only uh, license cost and cost of plugins. Then comparing with experience on the small amount of transactions, Shopify will be leading in terms of pricing. However, as the transaction amount grows, experience will ultimately become cheaper. The other important factor to consider here was uh, these two options, uh, across these two options, uh, Kentica experience is general purpose DXP. So if in the future, uh, the current CMS that must not be named will become less reliable option, the main website content can be migrated here as well. Okay, done with money talks. So we have uh, chosen to deliver our e-commerce solution through experience. What's next? Since the main site remains on the current CMS, e-commerce functionality would have to be delivered in a headless manner via a set of APIs. We have a couple of options indeed how to build, in, how to build it in our solution architecture. Let's consider these options. The first option is to serve the core page HTML markup from the main CMS. And then e-commerce content can be requested separately dynamically via uh, the Ajax calls done to experience API. Okay, uh, the main advantages of this approach are, firstly, and uh, the most obvious option is page speed. Pages within these approaches will be loading faster. Also, we will have a decoupled architecture where the systems will minimally depend on each other. But there are a few side effects of this. Uh, disadvantages are e-commerce content will not be included into the server-side rendering, which uh, in turn will make it harder for search engines optimization. And uh, additionally, if uh, there are uh, uh, some dynamic features on your website, such as login and prices depending on the login state, uh, those features login would need to be implemented across both systems. The second option to consider would be uh, to call Kentica Experience APIs during the request processing by the main CMS. Here, visitors browser requests, for example, product details page from the main CMS. Then while this request pro is processed, uh, the main CMS queries Kentica Experience API for all e-commerce data required. Then this e-commerce data returned to the main CMS and served back to the visitor's browser. Obviously, aside from these two options, there are a million of other architecture choices. You can uh, use Kentica Experience in a headless manner with static site generators and any other platform, connect with um, Internet of Things, and etc. 
but for our projects we have chosen here only we were choosing here only between two options and the second option uh, was fitting us better to summarize when we are looking at the uh, product details pages to identify which particular information uh, shall be fetched from the experience apis uh, we are talking about probably uh, product title description maybe price and availability product options and variants product images maybe reviews and uh, uh, bundle information discounts etc now imagine we have displayed the relevant product details but what's next how this functionality will work together at the basket imagine we've got user browser we've got main cms and we've got experience apis user clicks add to basket on one of the products we've got product identifier which we can easily send to the uh, main cms and then transparently pass this product identifier to the experience now let's consider what happens if uh, the experience was uh, implemented in a classic manner as a full featured dxp but not in the headless uh, solution this request com com coming into experience would in turn uh, create a shopping cart cookie and return it back to the visitor however between the main cms and experience we would unlikely have such things such thing as a cookie therefore some customization would need to be done to send card identifier as a response uh, in the response body then from the main cms we can turn this into cookie and store on the user browser so that the state of the shopping cart and edit products there can be saved uh, for longer than than session for example if on the next day they will decide to add another product to their basket this is what will happen imagine that we still have current shopping cart identifier store this cookie and this cookie gets sent to the main cms as well as product identifier which needs to be added to the shopping cart then we can uh, transform the cookie card identifier into a sort of parameter or http header which will be sent to experience and then having those two parameters within experience we can find a particular shopping cart and find the product by id and add product into the shopping cart and then we can basically retrieve the response uh, successful response back to the user browser and notify user with some, some sort of pop-up that the the product has been added to their shopping cart in order to support this we will need to implement uh, provide custom implementations for the following interfaces i shopping service and i current shopping cart service the documentation on how to implement these services can be easily found on the experience documentation please check it first speaking about code customization there is one interesting case to keep in mind between the user browser and the main cms the session can be easily maintained however keeping the same session consistent between the main cms and kentica experience is much harder why is it important within the default implementation of kentica's current shopping cart service there is a performance optimization to temporarily cache shopping carts content within the session it works this way okay you click add to shopping cart request comes in the system checks if there is already a card stored in the session and if there is it will be returned obviously if there isn't the system will look at the shopping cart cookie uh, then query by this identifier shopping cart from the database cache it in session and return it back if there's a, a new shopping cart request when 
previously you haven't got any identifier of, of your shopping cart, new shopping cart will be created. Now, keep in mind that we don't have session and we don't have cookies here. Uh, instead of caching within, within the session, we would need to cache cards content in memory by identifier. And instead of using cookie, we can send a card identifier, can retrieve it from the request and find a particular shopping cart in the database. For new card creation, the logic will remain the same. The next step would be the basket review page. The current card identifier is still within the user browser and we need to display some shopping cart content back to the user. So basically we, re we request it from the main CMS, the main CMS requests it from experience and shopping cart content is displayed to the user. Then uh, on the review page, there will obviously be some additional fields like uh, billing and shipping address, uh, ability to apply uh, discount codes, uh, whatever. This ad additional information can be sent back to experience with the, at the same time with the create order uh, request when the user will be able uh, will be ready to create an order basically and upon order creation uh, details there will be response sent back to the user browser uh, identifying that they are ready to proceed with the payment and again uh, the same custom interface implementations in the code will be required here and the final step, and the most important one, the payment. For our architecture, we have decided that we will be integrating payment gateway not directly with experience, but since the main CMS uh, is responsible for the presentation layer, it would make sense to implement payment gateway integration with it. So basically, user clicks on order payment, proceed to payment button, they will be redirected to payment gateway. On the payment gateway, they will enter card details and upon successful payment, they will be response sent back to, you, to the user browsers, which they in turn would need to submit to the CMS that must not be named. And then this fact of order marked as paid will be submit to the experience through the API. In the response, we can display uh, order confirmation from experience, and then uh, Kintika experience can deal with some confirmation emails and further order processing. Similar techniques can be used when implementing other e-commerce features, such as bundles, coupons, discounts, recurring orders, or basically anything else. To summarize, Kentica Experience provides a complete set of e-commerce features. Kentica Experience, across other solutions, is extremely cost-effective platform. It has a flexible set of APIs that allow you to use it in a headless way, and depending on your requirements, you can choose from multiple architecture options in a headless implementation. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or discussions, please reach out to me in the chat. Thank <laughs> you.